I graduated on a Saturday, and then he had a show at Sacred Heart University Theater on a Tuesday. So I DM him on Instagram. I'm like, hey, man, like I just graduated like three hours ago. You were there. I was like, you were speaking there. I was like, I'm a stand-up comedian. Like, can I open for you at your show? Hey, everybody. It's me, Joe. Uh, I have sponsors now, so you get to hear about some really cool products from now on, uh, such as AirVapeUSA.com. AirVapeUSA.com. It's fast. It's elegant. It's smart. Break away from the conventional and seek a new kind of experience, a vaping experience. Like, seriously, like I was on the website today going around just checking out some stuff, and they have some really cool products on there, man. They have one, this one product called the Legacy Pro, like vape. I mean, you can use flour in it, you can use wax, and they say it's the only vape you'll need after you buy it. So I, I'm, I'm willing to take that challenge. Um, they also have very innovative designs, and you're probably wondering how do they get these really innovative designs. Well, it's a combination of high-end high uh, materials and... Really cool ideas, basically. So they're able to make some really cool stuff. So come on, go to the website, airvapeusa.com, and check it out. And for a limited time, we're also going to be running a promo. Use promo code MILLENNIAL and get 15% off all vapes, okay? You got the link in the description down here. As I'm pointing, it's, it's not here right now, but through editing, the magic of editing, it'll be here. All right, so promo code MILLENNIAL, get 15% off all vapes at airvapeusa.com. All right, enjoy this episode. Um, Where, like, we... We basically like had like a little couch set up and everything like that, but the problem was we when we would start recording in the fucking uh, summer, it was you couldn't have the air conditioning. It was such a small space you couldn't have the air conditioning on, and I had Billy Geyer and Fat Jay in there in the same oh, episode. God damn. I think they broke the couch and they also like stained. The, they just sweated through. They sweated through the shirts and then two couches behind them. Yes. Yeah, and man. Billy got so high he, he missed a show that night because he ate an entire bag of brownies. I kind of felt bad for that. Really? Yeah, he missed he ate Damn. an entire bag of brownies. I get a phone call from Pat Dunn. And uh he just goes, Is Billy okay? And I go, What? Like I'm, cause I'm like, oh my God, <laughs> one of my best friends in the whole world. Uh and he goes, No, he missed a show. And I'm like, ah oh, man, I think this might be my fault. <laughs> like <laughs> like That is pretty funny. Yeah, but it's uh that was it was it was just tough though, because like it was it was. It would get really hot. Like sometimes it would be like ninety degrees out or whatever the hell. And uh, I try to. I'm like, we're gonna do an hour, and I'd feel so bad for some of the people in there, just be sweating through it. How are we looking, Chris? Good. We're, we're recording. Yep. All right. Yes, we are recording. Did you yeah, put that on there? I saw him type that out. I was like, I wonder when Joe was gonna notice. Never have ADHD. We're off to a great start here on this episode right now. <laughs> uh guys, how you doing? Welcome, to Millennial Stoner. Uh, I'm trying to. Not let, talk too much during the intro. Uh, very excited for my guest uh, today. Uh, very funny. Mr. Tom McGuire. What's up, man? What's going on, Joe? How are we doing, man? Uh, nothing much, man. Thanks for taking the time out of your very busy schedule to do this. Absolutely. Um, so basically, like, I love, I'm a big fan of your comedy. I've watched you, because I, I think I first saw you in the comedy contest, which was, how, you won the Governor's Comedy Contest, right? Yeah. How long ago was that? The summer of 2021. So that was summer of 2021. Mm -hmm. So that was right... Was that, like, still, like, right after COVID? Yeah. That was, was, like, right, right after COVID. It was right after, like, things started to, like, started to assemble back a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, so you won that one. And bef before that, though, like, why... So, like, I always ask, like, why or when... When did you, like, start doing comedy or whatever the hell? Uh, what did so you grow up to? We'll start there, actually. I grew up Port Jeff Station. You're Port Jeff. Yeah. So you grew up Port Jeff Station. And when did you start doing comedy? Were you always like doing it in high school or? No, no. I Actually, I didn't even like stand-up. You didn't like stand-up? No, nah, for the longest time. And then I was playing basketball at Suffolk. Okay. And I was just horrible. At Suffolk Community College? Yeah, yeah. You are on the Sea Wolves or whatever the hell? No, that's Port that's Jeff. That's Stony Brook. That's Stony Brook. Oh, the yeah, Sharks. Yeah, yeah we were the Sharks. <laughs> so I was playing there. And it was crazy, dude. We were like the number one ranked Juco in the country and shit. Like it was really? wild. Yeah, dude, it was sick. What position did you play? Uh, it's like shooting guard. Were you like a basketball guy going up? I was a shooting guard. I was. Yeah. I, like in high school, basketball was like my whole life. That was your life? life. It yeah. was like my whole life. Okay. And then then you hit college and like, I remember one night. like, on Were you one of those guys that you were like, I'm going to do this. Like, I'm going to go to like, I'm going to go do this for a living, like, go overseas, yeah, maybe play in I Europe was, or some shit. Absolutely. I was one of those guys. Were you good? You can be honest. I was, um, I was a good three-point shooter. Okay, so you knew your spot. Yeah, like I wasn't like a good all-around player, but I was a very good shooter. Okay, that's valuable on a team, man. Yeah, we so talk like, sports I, on here; it's fine. Yeah, so I was, <laughs> so I was like always gonna be able to like find my way onto a team just because yeah. I had that one skill. Yeah, but then like in college, dude, I remember we went out on a Friday night, 
and we had practice at like 10 a.m. on a Saturday. 10 a.m. on a Saturday. Yeah, and the whole team went out, and I was so hungover. <laughs> And just like this is the story as old as time. Yeah, dude, like I, just, I didn't do what I was told not to do. I did yeah. what I was told not well, to no, do. Well, no, dude. But then like all like my other teammates who were like athletically gifted were just up and like throwing down dunks and shit. And I was like, yo, I was like, if I oh, want to be able to like like sports players back in the eighties, yeah, they just wake up, do cocaine, and go play ball, <laughs> dude. I was like, if I even want to be able to like compete with this level of basketball, like I I will have to like. Sleep well every night. Perfect nutrition. Like oh, constantly dude, I be training. I, think, I don't think people understand like how much of a well-oiled. Like I love when people are like casually. I could have played sports. I'm like, could you have? Could like today? Mm-hmm. Like the way that there's conditioning and the stuff that you have to do in order to just like, like like do shitty stuff. Like in order just to like drink like that, you have to like maintain some kind of like physique. Yeah. So, so and then never dude, mind playing professional ball. Yeah. And I just remember being like hung over at practice and like seeing my teammates like dunking shit and being like, what the fuck am I doing here? Honestly. <laughs> it was that. Like, it was that moment. That it was that moment. You. I had like an epiphany. And, but at the same time, I was taking public speaking. Oh, okay. Communications, yeah. if you will. Yeah, yeah. That was so your was minor t- or whatever like that? No. It was oh, just, and this it was high just, school? No, no. This was in uh, at Suffolk. Oh, okay. And I had to take public speaking. It's just like a communications. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, like prereq. I was a business major. Oh, uh, okay. But I was taking it. And then at the same time, like I had started to like fall in love with stand up. Okay. For- what started that? Like, what, um, was there a special? Was it just something you saw where you just came through the channels one day? Uh, or, like, I guess YouTube? No, I mean, that's nobody watches TV. No, nah, dude, honestly, like, it was probably like my dad died around that time. Oh, shit. Okay. Yeah. So then, like, I had used, like, my mm-hmm. logic was like, all right, like, I'm like very sad right now. Oh, okay. What is, like, what is the opposite of this feeling? Yeah. And I was like, well, laughter would be like the opposite end of the spectrum so i was like all right well what's like supposed to make you laugh oh so you were seeking it out stand up oh okay so then i started watching a lot of stand-ups like i remember like i i like my generation like Mm -hmm. grew up on kevin hart Mm -hmm. yeah so i remember like watching his specials in high school and like them not really doing anything for me yeah but then watching them again and like i fell in love with those and then sebastian and then bill burr was like the first comedian that made me like good list like really really belly laugh bill burr got that for me too the first like time i saw bill burr i thought i was gonna piss myself yeah i he was like the one guy where i was like i can't even believe someone's like this fucking funny those are one of those guys i think you watch and you're like it looks so easy like yes. you watch Bill Burr and you're like, I can do it. Like that's what yeah, people yeah. go like, I could do that. And then you realize the effort and everything. But like he makes it look the way that Tony Hawk makes skateboarding look, like anybody could do it. Yeah. No, dude. I remember even like the joke. It was he opened up his Which special, one? and he had the joke about like uh, like kids are getting fat. Yeah. He's like these kids are just getting fatter and fatter. Yeah, like he's, the parents are trying to make them unfuckable. Fuckable. And when he said that, dude, like me and my buddy just lost it in my friend's basement. Oh god, that's but then, funny. While this is all happening, yeah. I'm taking public speaking okay right so my final okay for my public speaking class is in the beginning of the semester you got assigned a state okay so i remember the kid before me who i went to high school with got assigned south dakota for the year okay and i was like yo that fucking sucks <laughs> yes yeah, and then i go up and i pull and i pull north dakota get the fuck out of here i swear so now i'm stuck with north dakota for the whole semester oh my god so for my final i had to give like a speech in front of like 300 people okay convincing them to visit North Dakota. <laughs> so you're using like a little bit of every, a little bit of debate, a little bit like, you know, Dude, like, yeah. So like, I was like, you know what? I was like, let me just like maybe open up with a joke. Yeah. Uh, cut the tension, if you will. Break yeah, the yeah, ice. Yeah. So I opened up with a joke and it got a huge what, do you laugh. remember the joke? Yeah. I was do you going, remember what it, it was? It was so stupid and yeah. hacky, but I was going last. So yeah. I said to everyone, because all the students that were in the audience yeah. were there to get extra credit. Yeah. So I said, I was like, look, I have great news for everyone that's here tonight. Like, I'm the last speech of the night. Like, let's wrap this oh, up. Oh, you're the last get, guy. Yeah, too. and I was like, let's wrap this up and let's get the hell out of here. And everyone started like clapping. Oh, and you did the easy. You gave him a softball. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude, you knew I, it, I fucking you knew it, it up. You knew you'd get the laugh. It's yeah, not a great yeah. joke, but, but <laughs> no, it's not a great joke. But but he got the job done. Yeah, and I remember, of course. I remember getting that laugh and being like, wow, that's a good like, film. That was amazing. And then after that, then I signed up for a Truzen's comedy. So class. you signed up for Truzen's class. Yeah. For those listening, uh, that's a class you can take through Governor's still. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you can get that on the web, probably the Governor's website. Yeah, I think it's running right now. It's actually. running right now. Uh, but uh, so you just signed up for the class. <clears throat> yeah. So you started. You said you started doing it like right around. What year was that? Like how so long? that was before. Um, this is pre-contest. How long did you? So you start then. How long? The class is what a month, three couple weeks. Yeah, so I think I took it in like the summer of 2019. Okay, 
And, and what did you learn in the class for the, anybody who was learning to take a class? Like, t- tell them like I don't, I don't remember. You don't remember? I have like everyone always talks about their class experience. Like yeah. I have no idea. You know, it was to be, and this is not me talking out of classes. I just feel like a lot of the classes there's a lot of technical side of stuff. I've never taken a class. Mm. I'm not saying I'm special. I've just never. I'm just broke and I'm stoned all the time. I don't have time to go do it. But like, uh, mm. I think I always tell people go take a class. Um, uh, and but like a lot of it is probably. I always say I'm like a lot of it's probably technic- technical stuff. Like, um, don't walk around a whole lot holding the mic a yeah, certain way. Shit like shit that. Like move the, the mic stand. You know, move the yeah, yeah move yeah, the yeah, mic yeah. stand behind you. Shit yeah. like yeah yeah yeah. You learn all that. Yeah. But like, and then I remember like working on my set and like yeah shit like that. But like, I don't remember like exact like specifics about like what really like I like learned about joke writing right okay. like, it it just comes down to like if you're funny you're you'll funny. be good in stand up yeah. and if you're not you'll fail out exactly you know what i mean yeah i understand um so i'm just curious for that just from a standpoint of like everybody always says there's a class here there's a class there uh, and does it like what do you actually learn from it? And at least you know, as long as you write jokes and you work on your style, I, that's why I always tell people you should definitely take a class. So you took it, you take the class. After that, what do you just start to go out there, try to go to mics, get spots or whatever, or just you, you hooked up with some people, try to start doing shows, or did you just do the contest right away? So what happened was my first, like my graduation show mm-hmm. was November of 2019. Okay. That's when everybody goes and sees you and everything. Yeah, yeah. Like so that. I did that, and then I did stand up. Like I did like the open mic bringer shows for like five <laughs> months, and then COVID hit. Fuck! It was that close. COVID. Yeah, dude. It was November 2019. Yeah, I was like March 2020. It hit. I was like a year, two years in. So then I took a year and a half off. We all did. <laughs> no, but like you know how everyone was doing like those underground shows and yeah, like, I found like but there was there were few, but you just stopped completely. I stopped completely. What I was the thought behind that? Just because the you thought felt behind like, that was I didn't want to ruin it for me. I knew I loved it because it was going to be tough. I was I was dying. Yeah, yeah, I knew I was like I'm like already new to this. I don't want to develop like bad habits in like a fake comedy show. Yeah, yeah, yeah okay. Like I didn't want That's to fair, do dude. like a year of Zoom, so I was like, you know what? Let me just like. But it's also not that you're only a couple months in. That's not gonna. Yeah, so no you, one's like, oh, Tom McGuire's not doing shows. No one, doesn't, no one knows who I yeah, was. Yeah, but that, you know that, I mean? that's the point of yeah. There's that, and also the fact it's like it's not really gonna prepare. Like you do a couple months of shows with a live audience, and that that's out of the. Then they take that away. Yeah. So you're not gonna learn a whole lot just from somebody who's experienced audiences, and how now has to do it in front of a camera. It's not the same thing, mm-hmm. you know. So I don't think you're gonna get the. You're not gonna grasp comedy the same way you would if it was a live audience too. Yeah. yeah. Not that if somebody exactly. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. 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 So then I then I started my first show back was May first, two thousand twenty one. Okay. Mm-hmm. And uh, you just like hit the ground running, like took the first like as soon as you knew there was an audience, you're like, yeah, sign me up. Yeah. So like before the pandemic, um, one of my friend's dads went to high school with Butera. No way. Yeah, yeah. So he, John Butera is a producer on Long Island. Yeah. So so he said to me, he was like, oh, do you know John Butera? And I was like, no, I've heard of him, but like I've never worked with him and he was like oh like, let me like put in a word for you and like we'll like get you on a show or whatever yeah, yeah. that was in like early march yeah of 2020 and then COVID hit so like that never happened and then i get a text from john in like april of 2021 now mind you i've still never like met him and yeah. i just get a text that says still want to do comedy with a question mark Ugh, that's ominous it was like mad, yeah, it was yeah. mad creepy to be hey, honest with you. That's like, you're up. Hey, you up? <laughs> yeah, no, dude, it was. I was like, Butera wants to fuck me. But yeah. I was like, <laughs> you heard it here. Yeah, um, but I was like, I was like, I do want to do comedy. And I was like, at that point, I didn't know how to like get back into it. You oh, know what I mean? Oh, so I was going to ask you, did you, because you're so new into it, were you worried that like, towards like, okay, the world's coming back together, but I, I kind of don't know anybody or I kind of like. Yeah, yeah, this, yeah dude. And no. Actually, dude, my biggest concern at yeah. that time was like that whole time off of stand up. Like, I did like just like a lot of like therapy and like working on myself, yeah, which and, is good for you, yeah, yeah. And like, had beat like you know, like the depression I was dealing with, yeah. Like, I had like bad anxiety, was having like panic attacks all the time, yeah, like, beat that. And then I was like, fuck, like, I'm not gonna be funny anymore. No, it's it's still there. <laughs> you know what I mean? I was like, damn it, I was like, I fixed myself too much, and now I'm not gonna be funny, so like. Going back into it, I was like, I don't know if this is even going like, to work for me I thought you were going to tell me some weird anymore. story. So then I walked into a church and got molested after that. And that was no. funny again or some shit. Like, <laughs> yeah, right. It's like I just started like, yeah, like, doing shit like that. 
So I got a drug problem real quick, and all of a sudden I was fucking hilarious. <laughs> yeah, I started shooting up. And That's then, uh... funny. I've heard people say that before. Like I've heard people who were always worried because you know the whole thing that like misery loves comedy. If you even if you grew up fucked up, you're probably a very funny person. Yeah. yeah. I always tell I always hear people it's like oh, I'm too afraid to go to therapy. I don't want to lose my edge. And yeah. I'm like I don't want you to lose your mind. Yeah. No. It's, you know? it's like, stupid. You should go. And, no, because and fix. yeah, obviously, like there's a you, there's a darkness to this. Hundred mm-hmm. percent. Like you have to. I think you have to be a little fucked up to like do this you know like there's a comedy is one of those things where you have to look at something through like an obscured lens i think Mm -hmm. and like normal people don't really do that so if like you know this really sucks but like every once in a while i hear about some horrible tragedy like i I look on tv and you're like this kid was molested by three priests and i'm like oh my god i bet he'd be a hilarious comedian when he gets older like you know what i mean like that darkness (laughs) You yeah, know, like get but this kid into comedy. You class. get this kid, but you. So you worked on yourself for the year. Yeah, yeah. was that tough to like walk away from? Like, because you said you fell in love with it. Did you fall in love with it immediately? Yes. So actually, dude, like, I was taking the class, and mm-hmm. like, I didn't tell anybody. I didn't tell my mom. See, a lot of people do this. Yeah, were no, you ashamed? Dude. Was that like? Were you dude, like? I or was, were you afraid? I was in the closet about it because in the closet comedian. Okay, dude, because I quit basketball to do comedy but like everyone knew me like before comedy like everybody knew me as like a basketball guy that was like my identity now that you say that i'm like i get it like i see the look and i'm like it definitely yeah, I still yeah. Carry yeah. Like, like no the... you like you look like because you look like every press conference i've seen of somebody sitting there like we didn't play well today guy like <laughs> like like we didn't we lost the game together all right coaches up no, next. i mean i couldn't say that because i didn't play but <laughs> but i could be like my team did not perform well today <laughs> yeah. Um, so you, you're a basketball guy, you were saying your whole yeah. time. Yeah. So they like, I remember like telling like my friends and shit and being like, oh, like, you know, I'm going to stop playing basketball to do comedy. And, like everyone thinks like, everyone thought I was nuts. Everybody always does. Yeah. But then like, I also just had like this like gut feeling that I was like, I don't know why I feel so compelled to do this, but no. like, there's something like drawing me to this. Dude, I admire that. You know, that's a passion. You know, I think, I think comedians, we're cynical. So, like, sometimes we're always afraid to admit that, like, I love this. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, this yeah. is my favorite thing. Like, the feeling I get from this is unlike anything else, which it's what it is for me. It's actually kind of similar. When I started doing this, like, from the very first thing, it was one of those things where I was like, I like this, like, but I like this differently than the way I've liked other things I've tried. Like, I like this a lot. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? So, like, you fell in love with it. So, when you decided, during the, the 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 pandemic to walk away was that tough did you still write at all or were you like cold um, turkey no i'm off comedy for a year no nah, i mean oddly enough like during that time i got kind of fat okay so <laughs> I, think, I was also again, like I think we all did <laughs> yeah so i was also like lo- but i'd never been fat because i've been okay. an athlete my whole life okay so it was very weird for me okay so then like during like, i just lost like a bunch of weight so i was still like doing things like proactively in my life okay you know what i mean but like yeah. Yeah, I don't remember, like, ever really, like, missing it. I sort of just felt okay. like, for whatever reason... Well, like, you're also working on yourself a lot, so that's probably taken up a lot of your time. Yeah, and, like, I was busy. I yeah. met my girlfriend. Like, oh, I was a busy go. man during that time. That's good, man. I mean, it's good because, like, it's good that, like, you can kind of, like... You have the ability to sort of remove yourself from things just for, like, mental reasons and everything like that. Because, like, whether... I think whether you do it or not, it's... If you had kind of... If you would maybe if you had went into it full like no I'm still gonna do comedy during the pandemic you would have been like it would have it would have made it worse or tougher or something like that yeah you know I mean, it just felt it would have like, stressed you out exactly it yeah. felt like such a good thing that I didn't want to like ruin it for yeah me. I get that I it, get that it, it would be like if if you like if you met a girl that you really liked but then someone was like all right but you have to go on shitty dates for a year a year I'll just wait yeah you like, <laughs> yeah, like I might as well just not do that but you then know? you know there's no guarantee that she's I mean I'll take the you tell me there's a chance I'll take the chance yeah. So you're done. You you did. So how do you? It's just Butera hit you up. You're on a Butera show. Yeah, you were on the show. I came I back was to on the show. Yeah, yeah. It was. Uh, That's right. It was you, Butera, Terry McNeely, Tony Landolfi. Oh yeah, I hosted that show. Yeah. That's right. At Farrell's Tavern. Fuck. That's right. Yeah, May first, 2021. At fucking Farrell's. Yeah. That's right. Talk about a comeback show. Dude. Fucking Farrell's. No, I remember that show because you were on it, and. That's right. I was talking to you. That's one of the first times I met you. Was that this is fucking great? I knew. I was like, I, I was talking recently about this, and I'm like, I thought I did his first show, or one of the first shows back with him. So I'm glad that you remembered which one it was. But yeah, I was dude, talking. I remember, I remember being so nervous for that yeah. too. 
I thought you were funny. I, I remember. Well, I, I remember re- thinking you were funny. I also remember this. The reason why Terry McNeely and Tony Landolfi were down there were because I was at, at this guy Adam Snares, who was a, like. In I started, the, dude. I started the. You started. You know Adam. Same day with Adam. So Adam yeah. was moving to Florida, mm-hmm. and I he invited me to his like going away party. I knew Terry and Tony would be there. And I was like, oh, you know, still trying like still getting to know each other a little, everybody a little bit too. So I popped down and everything. Terry and Tony to proceed proceed to get a little drunk and I'm like I gotta go and they're like where are you going and I'm like I gotta go host a shitty bar show down at you know yeah, not yeah. shitty bar show but you know a, sh- a <laughs> shitty bar show a shitty I'll bar say show. a shitty bar show <laughs> <laughs> a shitty bar show and Farrell's in Ronkonkoma and Landolfi just looks at McNeely he's like we gotta go do a drop in we gotta go yeah. And they just came down there, and I'm like, uh, I was like, here they come. I'm like putting them in there. They had a great time. Yeah. Three, Dude, like, they murdered, too. They did. I knew they'd murder it in Farrell's Tavern with, with the clientele there, man. I knew yeah. they would. They just, everybody loves that their brand of humor, man. Yeah, there was like 10 people on there that show. There was 10 people on that show. <laughs> yeah, it was fucking... There was 10... You know what? I did... I actually just... It was funny. I just hosted... I just hosted at McGuire's like a weekend ago for Andy Pitts. And... Um, I remember thinking, I remember, like, it was like my first real, uh, like, hosting at the club. Uh, and I remember just being like, who else is on the, on the, who's on the card? Like, who else is up? And it's like, it's you, Future, and then Andy. And I'm like, what? There's three of us? Oh, my God. Like, there's not 30, there's not 30 comedians yeah, up right no, beforehand? Yeah, it's nice. It's nice. When, it's like, like shocking a, a little bit. But that's what showcases are, man. That's mm-hmm. what they are supposed to showcase everybody. Um... So, uh, your first show back, Farrell's, how'd you feel doing your first show back? How did you feel? It felt good. I remember my did mom- Did you have new stuff? Did you do old stuff? Did you- I think I just did old stuff. Okay. I saw, I had my mom and my Aunt Lisa came. That's right, yeah. And, and I told my Aunt Lisa, I was like, look, I was like, the family doesn't know I'm doing stand-up yet. So, you, so they still, up. nobody knew yet? They still didn't know. Wow. Yeah, so then like- It'd be crazy by the end of this, like, and they still don't know. Like, oh. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah, right? I'm like, and I've still kept it I've a still secret. kept it a secret. Later. I have to put, fuzz my face out on this. Yeah. So then. And then, like, that was May, and then the laugh-off started in July. The la- So that was May, and the laugh-off started in July. Yeah. So. And then I fully came out of the closet as a comedian. I was going to say, that so point, you, you I just told people I was doing it. Yeah. Well, you needed to. <laughs> I had to, yes, because I, I needed need, people to you come. You needed some people to show up. Yeah. Um, so you decided to do the laugh-off and everything. The governor's laugh-off, which they do every year. Actually, the new ones, they're probably starting to get signed up for that soon um, in the next couple months. But uh, So you decided to do that. And I have such a love hate relationship with contests mm-hmm. because, like, to me, comedy is very subjective and everything like that. So it's like, and listen, I'm not like, I'm not saying ban comedy contests or it's stupid or anything, but like, it's always, it's it, it's just, it's, it's I get, I tend to like get very amped up about it just because I'm like, it's subjective. But I still think you can be, the, there's, there's stuff to be the funniest person in the room. So when you did, did the contest, like, first round, how'd you feel? Were you just screwing around? Was this a real attempt to try to win it? Um, did you think you would win it? You know what I mean? I did. You know what's bizarre? Yeah. Is like, I remember when I got like the, I saw like the Instagram post, like all oh, like the great Long Island laugh off. I was yeah. standing in my den and I, and I said to my mom, I was like, I'm going to sign up for this. I was like, I'm going to fucking win this thing. Yeah. There you go, man. <laughs> so you like, you manifested this. I, yeah, dude, for whatever. I don't know why. I don't know what made me say that either. I just said to my mom, I think I said it like joking around, like, I'm going to fucking win this thing. And she was like, sign up. And then I did it. And I saw most of the rounds of this contest. There was some, there were some good people in there too. Yeah. Like, I'll say what I think like really set me apart was I did a different set every round. Yeah. Okay. So like, yeah. So you weren't, you weren't going back and doing jokes and then like putting one more on the end or tacking one new joke on the end. Yeah. So like my logic going into it was, I was like, it's good. Say it was the same judge as the Are whole time. Are you sure time. you want to share your secrets like that? No, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's not really like much of a secret. No, but it's what works for you. Yeah. Well, well, it could work for anyone that's doing yeah. the contest, so. I thought you were going to be real shitty, but I'd be like, it worked for anybody that wants to be good. Anyway. No, <laughs> no, no, no. But I, my logic was, all right, so like, let's say like it's the same judges okay. that judge like every round. I okay. was like, they're not going to laugh as hard the second time seeing my set. I was like, so I need to like give them something new yeah. that'll make them want to see me again. Yeah. So that's what I did for the first round and then like the the semifinals. Okay. And then before the finals is when I I wrote like do you know like my whole joke about going to the doctor? Yeah. I wrote that like the a week or two before the finals. You wrote that finals. for the contest. Yes. So you wrote you did write so I was going to say did you write new stuff for the finals mm-hmm. because technically speaking you could just do two nights of new stuff and then that's my whole set but you wrote new stuff. Yeah. And like I think like that 
doctor joke like single handedly like won me the contest. Well, you're having the uh, the ability also. I mean, the advantage of doing new stuff is you you're gonna your the energy is gonna be kind of be exciting and new every night because it's new. Like you're you're presenting new material mm -hmm. to like a room full of people. Luckily, a room full of people. That was actually the benefit. If you get through the rounds and you have something new, you're kind of a guaranteed audience. Yeah. You know, you're encouraged to bring obviously like that. Um, but it it's it's sort of an exciting feeling. So your energy just presenting the joke and saying the joke is gonna be mad different just because like um you're you've got something new to present people instead of just doing the same joke you did last night again to a new audience mm -hmm. uh which you know you just got a different uh, mentality bringing to it so that's actually a really good strategy dude yeah but i like had i never written that joke i wouldn't have won you think that's that one that did it for you that's a good 100 percent. yeah it, it's you still like, do it to this day I'll, I'll close on it sometime i try not to do it like it, yeah because you like, don't want to be like I did like that's I want to put it to bed. It's just like you know when like you you write a joke and then like it's just like finished, yeah. like like you know it works and like you have a couple of something you can pull out of your back pocket at any time. Yeah. Oh, so like, I, I'm short on time, or I didn't realize I had much time as I did. You got to fill five minutes. I got these three things that I wrote, whatever that I yeah, know work. So like I I don't know if I do like a ten minute set and like that's a six and a half minute joke. Like I feel like I'm like cheating myself. So like, Why? Because you want to do more like two minute, two minute, two minute, well, two minute. Well, no, because I I just want to get better at stand up. Yeah. Oh, okay. No. Yeah. Yeah. You yeah, know what man. I mean? So like, I know like if I just keep doing that joke over and over again, it's like, all right, like it's like to me like that's like my number one like we'll call it like a weapon. I okay. guess, For lack of well, it's, well, it's my yeah, number yeah. one joke. Okay. So like, if I do it, I'm just like, yeah, like I know it's gonna work, but like mm -hmm. I don't really get any like satisfaction out of it. There's well, like I, I like that you said. Unless I'm getting like paid. For the spot. Yeah, no, I get it. Then, then That's I'll be like, different. All right, then, yeah, then yeah. I'm doing like all my age. You're doing spots and shit. Yeah, like if I'm yeah. if I'm like popping in somewhere doing a guest spot, like try something out. Exactly. That's what it's for. I do like all like my my B stuff. That's what guest spots usually are used for. You go in, you try like two or three new jokes in like a five, six minute, seven minute set or whatever the fuck, and then you you move on. That's a lot of people's open mic over doing a mics. Mm -hmm. um, so I understand that completely. Um, d it, when you were talking about writing a little bit too. Um, as far as how you write, what you write, um, like, do you write the whole thing out? Is it like buzzwords that you write down? Um, do you even, I mean, is it, is, do you, do you plan it out? Some, do you even your movement out on stage or is it just kind of freestyle? But do you, like, how do you, when you're writing a joke, what's it's, your, it's like just a lot of bullet points. It's bullet phone. points. Yeah. 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 So you riff a little it's, bit. So until it's you almost get like it? checkpoints throughout the joke. Okay. I might write out like a punchline. Yeah. But like the setup is never written out. So you usually just kind of get a premise and run with it mm -hmm. and just see what you can come up with? Yeah, it's a lot of me, like, pacing around my house. like And just talking to yourself? Saying it, like, and then, like, pretending I'm, like, on stage or, like, if I'm at work, just, like, walking around and, like, standing at the front desk and, like, just... I probably look like a psychopath. Probably. Hey, everybody. Do you like smoking weed, but you don't feel like paying for it? You'd rather grow your own, but you're, like, really bad at hoarder culture? Well, I got good news for you. I love growing marijuana.com. At ilovegrowingmarijuana.com, you can find everything you need in order to grow the best, funkiest plants in the world. I swear to God, okay? They even got one thing called the Marijuana Grow Bible. Right? By that, it'll literally take you through step by step by step in order to grow the best plants in the world. Go to ilovegrowingmarijuana.com. Check it out. Link right below right here. You'll have a great time smoking your own homegrown stuff, my friend. Now, enjoy this episode, or the rest of the episode, wherever you happen to be in it. Yeah, probably. Yeah, did. probably. <laughs> so at this point, you've been doing... So... But when you do the contest, like that was 2021, you'd only been doing comedy back for like a yearish, or not even less than that. It was like six months, yeah. So okay, and so your writing is just basically bullet points, freestyling. So you're sort of performing to the mirror, is what you're saying. Mm -hmm. Okay, let me let me ask you a question. As far as doing that and everything, then you try to get guest spots and stuff and work this stuff out, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so let me ask you a question. Do you feel? Um, uh, in that process or anything, do you go to mics? Do you find the mics to be beneficial? I'll only go to an open mic mm -hmm. if I if I have like because you popped down to the one on Mondays a couple yeah, times. I've like seen, if, I'm, and I'm just this yeah, is yeah, yeah. just asking kind of like how you view it. A lot of people don't go to mics. If Some I have do. like a premise in mind that like I can't really just like connect in my brain, gotta hear it out loud. With I gotta people. hear it out loud, and I gotta like see people's like facial reactions. Like mm. if it's like raunchy, like I want to see like you got some dirty shit sometimes too. So I understand. That. <laughs> so I was like, I gotta see like 
So then I'll go to a mic and I'll just like run that joke, okay. and then on the ride home, then it'll all make sense, and I can sort of like piece it all together. You, you're, you, it's, it's, it's literally like a process. It's like your process thing. Like yeah. that's what you're just describing to me. You like just, sometimes I just need to go to the mic to break the ice. Yeah. So then I can just be like, all right, now I can like really like pin this together. Because you have enough confidence in your writing that you know what's like what's funny and what's not funny. I think, mm. and like. So you have the ability, like when you're pacing around your house, I think that a lot of that stuff probably just comes now. And I'm not sucking your dick on this one. I'm just saying, I've seen you perform, you're pretty funny. And I can, like, at this point, you're basically telling me that a lot of that stuff just comes from pacing around your house, which yeah. is awesome, dude. <laughs> like, you know. Yeah. Most um, of it comes when I'm at work, to be honest you with you. You just go cycling through your I'm just like, head. yeah. I'm dude. just like, just pacing around. Do you just like, will you stop and like write something down? Or like, yeah. like in your phone, a lot of people use their phones. Like, I've pulled over to the side of the road to write a sentence in like the middle of the night. Yeah. Now, like, all of my, uh, yeah, I'll pretty much just like throw it in my phone. Yeah. And then pretty much like that's just like all I've never like handwritten anything. No, I big I'm such a fucking old man. I like to handwrite things like I'm 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 writing letters yeah, dude, to my civil why. war wife. I, I whenever I do that, I feel like I'm like doing homework. Yeah. Like I can't write anything and I can't type anything. It's the typing thing I can't do. Yeah. I, I force myself to do it because like, I'm like, if I don't write this down, this thought will go out of my brain and I'll never have it again. Yeah. Um, but like, uh, for, for some reason, writing it because it makes it tangible, mm -hmm. like it makes it real. Like it's on my phone. It's not real to me. It's in the box, you know? But if I write it down, it makes it like a real, something I can hold. Do, do you know what I think the biggest advantage of writing your Please, jokes is? Please, tell me. <laughs> is when you actually handwrite them, if, you, if you're like sitting in, in like the green room yeah. at a comedy club and you have like handwritten stuff, mm -hmm. everyone's like, all right, he's like going over his set. Mm. He's writing. But if you're just like on your phone, yeah. people might look at you like, what the fuck look, is this Look at this fucking sitting? asshole just yeah. on his phone playing Tetris. So a lot of times like I'll be sitting at the bar and just like on my phone and people probably think I'm like just being rude. <laughs> but I'm like, no, like, I'm actually like going over my set and like punching up a joke. Like I'm actually working yeah, on my yeah, phone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know well, what I mean? Well, that's a, I mean, I, I, to be fair, I bet a lot of, I think probably that's probably a lot of older comics view like the when the younger people because I mean I like again I have stuff on my phone too you'll you'll see me more with a notebook uh -huh. but like uh I just assume I usually just assume that people are are just at a comedy especially if I know you like in the beginning when I was when I was when I was like just kind of coming in uh I think I probably definitely thought that about some people that I'm like why are they on their phone now I realize that everybody writes shit on here so yeah but I don't know I didn't I didn't think that you were like some cunt on his phone or something like that <laughs> just, I, I'm one of those people like, that's that, what I like, thought of Tom McGuire I'm like this piece of shit yeah I'm, I'm one of those guys that like before I go on stage like I have to write out a set list I do too I have and to then, do that and too and then I have to like look it over and then give myself bullet points because the like, order's in your head now just for like yeah. reinforcement like my confidence I feel like you respond well to like like structure I do I, your brain clicks to that shit it that, does that's how I'm a my big efficiency guy yeah yeah dude, dude like I fucking I feel you I meal prep I pack yeah. like, lunch and shit like I'm a big efficiency guy I'm, I'm efficient outside of my own space otherwise I'm a slob but like <laughs> it's true though but like with comedy like I have to write everything out like I have to mm. at least do like I'll write beer joke I'll write dating joke just because I know what they are and I'll do it I'll do it in this order sometimes I'll, I'll, I'll it's like um Baseball. I'm fucking around with the plays before the game. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Like just just to see if I can come up with something. Or if I have a new joke, I'm like, where do I put that? But I have to see it. I used to just go early on. I used to just go up there and be like, I got this. What a fucking yeah. ass I was. What a fucking stupid I, ass I, I was. I hate that shit, dude. Yeah. I hate when I like I see comedians go on stage and they're. Oh, like, I love talking about what people hate. Go ahead. And, and they're like just fucking riffing about nothing. And it's like, oh, dude. It's Especially, like, it's one thing to see that, like a mic or like. Exactly. But it's like, why are you doing like, this is, all right. Go my ahead. biggest comedy pet peeve yeah. is when people complain like, oh, like I don't get booked and like I don't get spots. Oh, and then fuck. it's like. I know what you're going to say. And then they get up. <laughs> yeah. Right. They get their spot and they bomb. Yeah. And then they still complain. And it's like, well, what the fuck do you want? I have gotten to a point where people have you, you get this people come up to you and be like, "Do you see my set?" And you try to you try you try like at least in the be like you definitely try to be nice about it. You're like, mm -hmm. "Yeah, I saw it and whatever." And they're like, "What? What do you think I could work on?" And I have like given people like on, like without saying, "Hey, you suck." I've been like, "All right, who, who the fuck am I?" And anything like that. Like I've been doing this five years at this point. You know, like all right, maybe I can. Maybe they just have to figure it out. And I'll be like, "You should probably do this. Stop rambling and stand still." Yeah. And then well, like, the best is like the. 
when when someone's like, oh, dude, like I got like fucking oh that the blind I, confidence. Yeah, dude, I've got like forty minutes of material. And no, you're you like, don't. What? You don't have forty minutes of material. You barely have. You don't have two minutes of material. Yeah. I just like my biggest pet peeve in stand up is like really long setups. Hate that shit. Oh, you like the laugh per minute thing? Yeah, yeah. Dude. You're you you're gotta, a lot. You gotta you're be quick. Like, you gotta be efficient. I mean, if you're gonna tell a story, like if you're gonna do some storytelling shit like that, if you're gonna set people up, then you better have some fucking brilliant punchlines. Carrie Carava says it best. She says. The longer your setup is, like the more you're giving yourself the opportunity to drown. Yeah, uh, I agree with that because, like, I'm working on a new joke right now that's a little like the joke itself is long, but if you do it the right, look at the right way, you have joke, 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 and then you big punchline at the end. Mm. So, like, my big thing is to like not let it the description drag on too long yeah. without making a laugh happen because then the story is just boring. Yeah, and nobody like, gives a I'll, shit. I'll be on stage, and if I'm going like. 30 45 seconds do you have any long stories do you have anything yeah yeah because you, you're a lot of two minute jokes it's good stuff but i'm saying you're a lot of two, you're a lot of like quick stuff i have um i'm like i have like uh the doctor joke is like six and a half that's like long. six and a half that's the only one i can think of the the joke about like the jail field trip that i do <gasps> oh fuck it's like heard. two and a half minutes like not yeah. like crazy long yeah that used to be like a four minute joke yeah but you, that's a joke you can drag out if you need to no it was just me being a oh, dumb comedian oh tighten it up yeah, okay, yeah it was right. just everything was too fucking it was taking too long to yeah. get to the punchline so like yeah. as i've just gotten like better in stand-up i've sort of realized like oh no this doesn't have to be a four minute joke this could be a minute thirty yeah a killer joke i'm realizing that too as well like because i don't know what the fuck it is like for everybody thinks they're a goddamn philosophizing scribe or some shit in the beginning but i like i remember looking back at stuff and being like just say this like just say this don't say this that and the other thing just crunch that together and i changed like three jokes in the last like two years just from i'm like i think i just learned how to write you know what i mean mm -hmm. like it's it but you're look you start to look at it differently too once you because the only way to get better at it is to keep doing it mm -hmm. so i think you start the more you keep doing it you just slowly start to look at things differently and you start to see jokes differently and you start to see language differently too yeah, because yeah. you start figuring out where the joke is and certain things fuck you can't even look at something serious without finding the funny angle in it you find yourself laughing at funerals like a weirdo mm -hmm. you know what i mean because of something that you, you know fucking that somebody points out to you meanwhile while everybody's crying over Aunt Mabel being put in the ground and you can't stop <laughs> laughing at the fucking priest toupee. Yeah, you know yeah, what yeah. I mean? Because you see, you start to just see it differently. Yeah. And uh, I believe in that. I believe in the laughs per minute shit too. Like what you're talking about with Kravis yeah. is saying, like try not to let yourself drown. And like, you've got to be captive. You, you have to have it in order to be that captivating of a storyteller and land with a punchline. You really do. Yeah. I mean, you better be Dave Chappelle if you're going to go yeah. two minutes, no laugh. If you're going to punch You go two minutes, no laugh, dude. Your yeah. punchline better be... It better be as funny as I kicked her right in the pussy. Dude, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> exactly, dude. It better be fucking lethal. It's fucking... You better be that funny. But that's yeah, what I dude. mean, man. Like, the idea of, like, like boring setup is that you have a really good punchline, and you realize how good you have to be at this in order to do that. Like, yeah. you just said Dave Chappelle. I'm like, I don't know, motherfucker. That's yeah. even close to Dave Chappelle. That's the joke I was referencing in my head. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. see? Yeah, it's one of my favorite jokes he's ever said. It's excellent. It's um, a great fucking joke. Yeah, man. So, yeah, I mean, I, I understand that. Like, I, I think the blind... You see that, so, especially in Long Island, I, I you just meet so many people. Like, how many... I've stood there and just seen, like, just certain people go up there, and I'm like... I, I I can't wait to you quit comedy. Like you know what I mean. Yeah. Like I, like I, I think like like. You know what's weird is like as a young, I consider myself like a very young comic. What, two, three years, two years, a little over two. Two years, yeah. So like when people like ask me for advice, I'm mm -hmm. almost like Jesus Christ. Like you're asking me for advice. Yeah, like, I feel like, weird when people ask me for it. Yeah, but I I always just say like, people will be like like how do you get booked? Like how do you like get more spot? I'm like just get funnier. That's it. If you just if you get funnier, yeah. everything else is gonna follow. Yeah. Like I promise you, like if you're just getting up and you're killing, if mm. you have a ten minute set that just murders, mm. people are gonna take notice of that. Yeah. Just fucking get funnier. And that opens every door you need. Yeah. It's like when you're wor when you have shitty material and you're worried about not getting spots, But you can market the fuck out of yourself. <laughs> yeah, but dude, no, that's like going on Shark Tank with no sales. Yeah. It's like why it's are you talk. going in front of the investors when you have nothing for them to invest There's a lot of people in. like that, but there's also, it's weird because, like, I do think, I agree, but I also think with those those particular people that maybe, like, aren't funny or haven't figured it out or think they are funny, which is probably worse, I think. I mean, dude, I was awful when I started. We all are. I'm, you know, it's, it's never, I'm, you know, there's still, like, 
you don't get good at, good at this by just like walking up there like you're like oh, I've got this. No, it, you you realize that this is like there are layers to this. You have to figure out, you know, like you walking on stage is like a whole thing. Figure out where to stand and shit like that. Yeah, you know, when I first started this, I was walking around stage like I did a pile of cocaine, took ADHD medication, and then snorted like took three Adderalls and shoved it up my ass. I was moving up stage so much, mm. and now it's like it's so much funnier just to stand there, look at your audience, and like let the punchline sink in yeah in my opinion it is i th i think st you're st I sound like, like such a queef everybody hates me like, <laughs> yeah. it's like what the fuck does he know i think i think stand-up gets good when you like figure out like who you like who you are as a person like in your real life oh yeah it's being it's it's you it's it's i one of like, the reasons i love this is because it's um it's a genuineness. There's, you have to be genuine about it. Yeah. That's why people who steal jokes always get found out. Yeah, because everyone know. can tell that you're lying. Exactly. Do you it's, know there's actually, go ahead. there's real science behind that, like when something authentic, like authenticity, when it leaves your mouth, like the wavelength that people receive it with is like bigger yeah. than say like what like a lie would be or yeah. just like something that's not true. Yeah. It's like, almost like people like naturally just like you, they can feel it and like they accept it more. Yeah, no, you're right because it's a. It's probably like I mean, I'll, if you went on if you went on YouTube right now, you'd probably see some scientists be like, "Oh, you're not lying, so that means your vocal cords are actually less stressed, so it comes out clearer or some shit." Like, what are you doing? Authentic voice. Yeah, this is why Chris exists. This is what auth authenticity of lying. Yeah, I'll look that up. But like, yeah, yeah it's you're right. You're you probably are right about that because I love the fact that you can't really be good at this unless you're being up there and being really honest. Yeah, you know what no, I mean. It's, yeah, it's got to be some. But that's why a lot of people don't understand the the because everybody's like, oh, it's your truth. Which when someone comes up to me and says, what's your truth? I get like all weirded out. I'm like, what? I tell dick jokes. Mm -hmm. Let me see here. Yeah, no, I, no. I think I saw it like on Twitter. One of my boys sent it. No, you probably, but you, there's probably some. And I also science. probably butchered it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I probably wouldn't take my it's quote. It's actually the exact opposite of that. Yeah. Um, They're like, no, you should lie on stage. No, but you're right. And, and like, if you're not... I think when it goes to writing material, somebody once told me... I remember I asked... some. I was hanging out after a show one time. I asked a comic once, uh, and I said, hey... I just asked him, like, hey, piece of advice. Anything. I've been doing it X amount of years. I think I had doing it for four years at that point. Mm-hmm. And uh, one of the things that they told me, uh, they told me a lot of different things, but uh, one of the one of the things that he told me specifically about like writing, he goes, "Don't write what the audience, what you think the audience is gonna find funny. Write what you think is funny, mm. which is being honest. That's being authentic. That's being yeah. like that's presenting. That's not your truth. That's just being like, well, I think this is funny. Yeah. So then write that joke and then present it to the audience. See if they find it funny too. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. if you if you if you're really funny." Then that'll make them laugh. Yeah. But if you try to, that's why I hate when I ever when I hear fake stories sometimes. But if if it's if it comes from an honest place, like your doctor story, or um, a lot it, of that joke is actually like fabricated. Yeah, but like it comes from an honest place. The real story, or did I just expose you right now? You just, you just so yeah. like the real story. I mean, like yeah. yeah. I mean, obviously, like we'll do any, the setup. To describe describe the joke. So like the intent is like pure yeah but like the events that i described yeah. like are, are made up oh yeah you're exaggerating a little bit yeah so like the real story is is i went to the doctor mm -hmm. for the first time alone and i went up to the ipad and i was just like i felt like i was taking an sat i was like what the fuck am i doing <laughs> yeah then i was like looking at like my health insurance card and i was like i don't even fucking know like what to look for on i don't this. know what like, these numbers mean <laughs> yeah dude like so i had to like text my mom and like ask her like what do i do here like what do i sign but that's what i mean this comes from a real place so, like yeah. everything came like that like that insecurity in the office yeah. was real but then i was like all right what would be like the funniest scenario? And you exaggerate a little and bit. And then you and then I wrote Every it from comedian there. does that. Every good yeah. comedian does that. It's never the only because you have to exaggerate for funny reasons, but it came from the spot of you being like, I can go to the doctor by myself and you go into the office and you're like, I can't. Yeah, even because be I like went into it mad arrogant, <laughs> like just like, Yeah, I'm gonna fucking do this. And you're like, I don't know what to do. What does this card mean? Yeah. And I was like holding up traffic behind me. Yeah. So I was oh, having like no. dude, I know I was having like And you anxiety, told me yeah, you said like, you were suffering from anxiety at that yeah, time too. Dude, so I, you're I, like, I have to get out of here. Breathing guy heavy i felt like my throat closing i was like <gasps> he's like what's happening i don't know i don't know what happened yeah. i need pills i think yeah please help oh man but that's like a real place because shit i mean that's i can t I, I anytime i have to go to a place for the first time it, it's mm -hmm. like every nightmare scenario happens like i yeah like i try to be so like i remember going to like any 
like I remember going to the dentist for the first time by myself. I, like I didn't know what to do. They're like, D you're here early. And I'm like, is that bad? Should I have not come early? Like, what does that mean? You know, I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. I'm a fucking, I'm a 13 year old in a 35 year old's body. It's crazy. That's yeah. what I identify as. I identify as a teenager. <laughs> um, but that joke comes from a real place. So when you tell that joke, you were, you were like, oh, this moment that I was like, I'm by myself and I had to, I'm totally bitched out for no reason. Then you exaggerate what the funniest versions of that are. Mm -hmm. But another motherfucker will just completely make up a story like that. And he's like, oh, there never was any doctor's office. I just wrote that. Yeah, yeah. And it, you can tell, like, not that that's not funny, not that people haven't done that. Maybe because, you know, obviously people write scripts and everything. But at the same time, I'm like, it's just not honest. Yeah. And you can tell it's not honest. It feels feel like it. such a setup. I hate stuff that feels like a setup. Mm -hmm. I like to be tricked into my comedy. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like lure me in and shit like that. Um, so yeah, I mean, yeah, I can under I can understand authenticity. That's why I love it uh, too. But uh, uh, back on track. Lost my fucking train of thought. God damn it. Um, <laughs> yeah. So you won the con. You so you go into the you're in the middle of the contest now. We had like a fucking 15 minute tangent about authenticity and passion. We That's did. Nice. Um, but, yeah, so so you win the contest. Sorry, I have to make sure I'm good. Um, uh, so you win the. So you're in the contest. Did you when you made it to the next round? Were you like, I'm like, are you are you one of the mentality? I'm like really cool that I made it to the next round. Like, I'm not gonna place. So, then you get to the next round. It's like I'm not gonna make it to the finals. Here's okay. Th this is what's like odd about it. Okay. It's like looking at the whole competition as a whole. I was like, I think I can win this thing. Okay. Each round, I thought I was never gonna advance. You did have that mentality. You're 100%. like one hundred percent. I mean, that's what makes you a comedian. It's like that. Weird... Oh no, you don't. You're not a. Con that's why I, I don't like comedians that have confidence. Yeah, I, it's something's but about it's us like wrong. you have like that weird confidence. It's like, oh, I can make one hundred and fifty people laugh, but then at the same time, you're like, God, I, I suck. I, like, I, I got they're nothing. only laughing because that's what they yes, that's what you always like, said. They're only I'm laughing fuck, because I'm a fraud. This is not gonna work. But like, you have like that confidence, but it's like also mixed with like self doubt. We all suffer from imposter syndrome. Oh yeah. Like I know you've done this too. Even if like like. T There'll be something like you'll have a great show, and then like two days later, you'll look at your jokes and be like, I'm such a fucking hack. Like, what am I yeah. doing? Like, I suck. Like, yeah, you ever bomb so bad you you drive home in silence? Yeah, they were telling you about <laughs> my Chris, Chris no, yeah. like that one. Yeah, oh man, <laughs> do, you, do you ever uh, do you ever do the lonely walk when your headphones are broken? <clears throat> Broadway no, Comedy Club all the way to Long Island Railroad. I bombed at Broadway Comedy Club and I had to walk. I remember going, I'm like, I'll just listen to music. And then, like, they literally, like, I pulled out my headphones and the, and the one end of it just fit, like, the end oh, of it pulled out. Damn, damn. And then I had to walk all the way down there. I ended up calling an ex-girlfriend of mine and to tell her I was quitting comedy. I was so fucking upset. <laughs> I was just like, I have to quit. I suck. I was in, like, you know, because you're in for three months and you're like, I kill every... It's probably only a matter of time before I get discovered. Yeah, you're you like, know? dude, you're like, where's fucking Where's my Central? fucking representation, <laughs> yeah, motherfucker? Yeah. Um, <laughs> And then you do one show that doesn't go well, and you're like, "What happened?" Yeah, you're like, I'm wow. so, like, I suck. I'm the worst. But that's part of it, right? Mm -hmm. Do you happy for the times that you've bombed? Yeah, I mean, you have to. Yeah. Every once in a while, I'll like intentionally bomb just to to feel something, like, just to like really feel it. Just that's to like cutting myself. in comedy. It's like I just cut myself by bombing. Like that's like. <laughs> well, no, because if I have material that's like it's working too well. I'll oh, you, like, get, all right. you get kind of psyched out by it almost? No, I'll be like, all right, you schmuck. Well, you still don't have an hour, so you uh, still couldn't fucking headline even if you wanted to. Mm -hmm. So go out there and try 10 new minutes, jackass, and let's see how it goes. And then I'll bomb. I'll be like, see that? You suck. Yeah. <laughs> like, get back. You try 10 whole new minutes. If yeah. you're that good, it should work like that. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you thought you were fucking a big shot, yeah. huh? It's like, well, oh, well, well, well try that story that hasn't been working like, for three months. Like you were an athlete. You got a real coach mentality about yourself. Yeah, I like brutal honesty. <laughs> Do you I fucking, dude, yeah. I hate people that are like, oh, Oh, like they like sugarcoat around it. I'd rather have someone just go up to me like, dude, you suck. Oh, that's I why too. that's why we didn't put you up tonight. You're not fucking funny enough. Yeah. Get funnier. Especially like, because right, we were, I'll get funnier. Yeah, especially because we were just talking about before of how like there's people that you see, like you do bar shows or whatever, and just one or two people that you're like, God, you suck. Yeah. Like what what compels you to do this? <laughs> I like, know. It's, and you're like, God damn it. Like, and you don't want to be like that. You and you get sometimes you get I don't know about you, but you get I get worried. I'm like, am I secretly like that? Am I secretly mm -hmm. like that? Nobody knows. You go and you write like two new jokes or whatever the fuck or like that to validate yourself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like, yeah, I know, I know what you mean, man. Like it's you I like the idea that you kind of like challenge yourself a little bit to be like because you don't want to rest on your laurels. You're not be like, oh man, I got ten minutes. Could have twenty. Yeah, exactly. I got 20 minutes. You don't have 30. Until you have like an hour that's killing. Yeah. You should always be working. You know what I mean? I believe you, man. I mean, it's it's like uh, 
It's well, that means that you're constantly working on your shit. You're not just going to rest on the 10 minutes that you wrote three years ago or two years ago. You know, you're, you're improving yourself. And that, like you said, you want to get better at this. That's mm-hmm. how you, that's probably, that's definitely a way of getting better at it. Yeah. You know? Um, so, so you're in it. So you I'll, didn't think I'll, metaf- make I'll metaphorically cut myself. <laughs> <laughs> thanks. Thanks. I'm working on all these. These are all new material jokes you haven't laughed at during this entire podcast. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, no, um, Basically, like, so you're in it. You don't think you're going to make it to the next round. You make it to the semis. Yeah, dude, every round, I'm, like, genuinely shocked. And you wrote, you're, but you were writing new minutes every time. Yeah, yeah. So you make it to the finals. Mm-hmm. Are you, like, it's oh, been a nice, are you still, like, it's been a nice run, nah, ladies dude, and gentlemen. Finals, I'm, I'm happy to be second. Dude, finals, I am fucking hyped. Yeah, you're hyped up? I am hyped Because one would argue, because you were so kind of lax about, like, I don't give a fuck, that usually makes people funnier because you're not stressed. Yeah. So I was going to say, if you get to the finals and you're like, now I'm, like, nervous. Was that well, a thing? Finals, I had such bad, like, imposter syndrome that I was, like, I had to, like, convince myself that, like, I was going to win. Oh. Or, or I was So gonna, you actually like, were reverting. Like, you made it to the next tune. You're like, I don't deserve to be in the finals. I was like, I don't belong here. Yeah, I would have gotten the same way. So then I had to, like, really fucking, like, dude, I was, like, like, every, like, fucking night, I was, like, signing it, like, in the winter of the 2021 Long Island Laugh Off is, and they were, like, Tom McGuire, and I'd, like, envision them saying it. Like, wow, to, like, you had, like, a vision board. Yeah, I'm big on, like, visualization and shit like that. Dude, but I, I was, like, you. trying to, like, convince myself that I was gonna win. It could be tough, man, because it, you, here's the thing. You don't, you're, you know, and anybody, I think, that suffered from anxiety on any level, I think this always hangs with them. It's always that little bit of unsureness. When you're presented with a situation that's out of your control, yeah. uh, such as a contest or something like that, you're always gonna be, like, but if I kind of knew, you know, I wouldn't be as nervous as this right now. Uh, if I had some more control over it or something like that. So you're, I mean, I've gotten that like that with comedy con. That's actually why I stopped doing them. I just get so fucking, like, I get competitive about it. Yeah. And then like I get like nervous, and then like mm-hmm. I had like a full on panic attack during a set one time when I was doing uh, a comedy contest. Yeah. And it was like a pack. It was literally like the the bar I was in performing it was completely packed. I didn't get a laugh until somebody t- stood up to take a piss. And I just said, like, nah, man, just take up, go to the bathroom. You're just seeing my hopes and dreams crash up here. And then I got a huge laugh. Yeah. And then I was like, good, I'm glad I have two minutes left in my set right now. Yeah, no, dude, like, I remember, like, that was also, I think, the first time I ever performed at the Levittown Club. Yeah, because they do the finals in the Levittown so Club. So even, like, that was just, like, nerve-wracking, being at, like, it's the It's a big main room, club. man. It's and you've been doing it, room, it a year sold out. at this point? No, six months. Is that the most people you ever performed of at that point? Yeah, yeah. 275 is what it holds. And it was sold out. Was, do you have any kind of stage fright? No, I don't have stage fright. Like, I have no problem getting on the stage. It's okay. more so, like, I just hope my shit isn't going to eat it. Okay. So the so audience like, doesn't really, aff- like, in, in a way that no, it would affect no, no. somebody. Okay. I mean, dude, I, at my college, yeah, I'll get to this. Yeah, go ahead. Well, we got we'll, time. I'll close on time. that story. Yeah, yeah. We got, we, got, we got plenty of time. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, like, I yeah, dude. I just remember, like, being in that Levittown green room and, like, seeing these comics that have been doing it for, like, three, Little, four, five yeah. years. I remember when they announced, like, the all the comics that were doing it, like, all 120. Yeah. I read all 120 names and I was like, oh god, like he's funny or she like, and was like, yeah, I'm like, I, it's fucking impossible. It also depends on the night, man. You only have to be funnier that night. Yeah, you know, like, but it, yeah, no, I was doing it six months and I was in the green room with these guys that were like, in my eyes, like, but you have like you have like comics. a training camp mentality to comedy, so you're kind of like doing, what's that crazy? You're doing CrossFit comedy in your mind, go look, psyching yourself up in the mirror, writing new shit. Were you the only guy? Be honest with me, were you the only guy? Because I didn't see every round. Were you the only guy that wrote new shit every time? To my knowledge, yeah, I, I think so. I mean, that's that's a little different, man. Yeah. Like, you and, know? and then everyone was like, oh, you fucking, look what happens when you bring people. You fucking. Did you bring people? Of course. You're supposed to bring you're people. You're a fucking yeah. schmuck if you don't bring Look at me. You're a fucking asshole if you don't bring people. People were like, yeah, I brought zero people. And it advanced <laughs> me. Yeah, oh, really? Why? Because like, you made zero dollars for the club, you fucking retard? Like, yeah, no shit. <laughs> Why would they bring you back? I you can't get fight. You uh, can't get your parents and your siblings oh to come god. see you. Like god damn. That's funny. I mean, listen, I've I've did I remember the first I did it like one year and uh I remember like I forgot I signed up for it because I, I signed up for it like months in advance. And I forgot I signed up for it. Yeah. And they're like, oh, Mike, you got to bring people. And it was like two days before and I couldn't get anybody. I'm like, and I'm, in my head, I was just like, well, the, I'm, I'm not going to advance. I'll just happy to have the spot right now. Like, I just literally forgot I signed up for it. But I have met motherfuckers that have been like, oh, I did the contest. I'm not bringing anybody. I'm, the, yeah. my, my words will speak for them, themselves. I'm like, will they? Will they speak for themselves? Because I've never fucking heard yeah. of you before. They for even some reason. say to you, they yeah. even say no, bringing people is things. a part of it. Yeah. It's like, all right, so I should probably bring some people. Yeah. Well, before it was like they didn't like say it out loud, and then like eventually they were like, "Yo, bring 
people to this. It's about, yeah. you know, part it's of this is if like, you can draw. So. Dude, it's literally like taking a test in high school and the teacher's giving you the answer key and you're like, I don't need that shit. I know the fucking answers. It's like... I've never met more arrogant people, honestly, that like, at least on whatever level that, that I'm at or you're at or whatever, the, the arrogant, the, the level of arrogance that you meet with people that think they are just like, no, you don't understand. Like, I was... I was cloned from like Lenny Bruce's and Sam Kinison's DNA. I, I mm. am comedy. Like, what are you talking about? Yeah. Like it, it's, it's very insane when you meet these people that are like, no, no, I'm, I'm awesome. Like I've, I just saw you do five minutes. I didn't see a single joke up there. Yeah. No, I've met comedians that are all confident. As no jokes. Yeah. It's crazy. I'm like, there's Bizarre. nobody. Do you not it's hear people? It's fucking wild. Do you dude. not hear the fact that nobody laughs? You know, who's a, a lot of New York city comedians are like that. I'm sure. Yeah. Well, that's, I mean, that's such a huge, huge fucking like I find them very arrogant I haven't met enough to make that assumption but I think I, I would imagine that that mentality is the same in LA oh yeah because it's like just, that, it like is, that, just that cuntiness yeah it is oh. because everybody's like I'm in the mecca like listen New York is one of the meccas of stand up comedy make mm -hmm. no mistake about it but like you know Especially after the, the fucking, especially after COVID and everything like that, I feel like like every fucking like everybody just woke up one morning and was like, "Oh man, yeah, I'm gonna do comedy now." Like I think that's what I've decided to do now, and they just the, mm -hmm. the gates flooded open. Um, so I'm sure like that doubled down in the city. So I'm I'm sure they're arrogant because they're like, "What well, I come from the mecca of comedy? Like what are you talking about? I'm, yeah. I'm I'm currently I'm in the master's program of comedy right now, but meanwhile they're." Doing some fucking, they're doing like half ass sets at a deli somewhere downtown. Exactly. Like you know they're doing I mean? like a bunch of open mics. And it's like, oh, I got up fucking 18 times this week. It's like, all right, well, you formed. Where? Yeah. It's <laughs> like, all right, w w what? You didn't write a single new joke. Like, your shit is still trash. Yeah. You know what I mean? Well, they're not doing any effort. They're thinking that, like, here's, they think that because they wrote three things. And any, a lot of people. Uh, probably think this way and, and, and any entertainment venue whether it be musician or an actor they think because they did the bare minimum that they, somehow that'll because they have this talent that only they can recognize they'll somehow ascend to the top mm -hmm. without doing anything they think they're gonna get discovered on a beach yeah and they think they're shit there's like no you don't understand once once i'm given the shot i'll be a, i'll be amazing it's like you've given nobody any reason to take a chance on you yeah but now it's also like the shot is your fine. <clears throat> you give yourself the shot. Yeah. So like, I don't know, man. I mean, like, <clears throat> I think it's like better to put out like sketches and shit like that. Yeah. I know you've been doing more of that. Yeah. I've been trying to because I'm trying to like build a following that yeah, way yeah. so I can like eventually like build my own tour. That's yeah. That's like okay. my end goal. Okay. But oh, it's so like, that's your, that was going to say goals are a big thing. Yeah. Yeah. So that's like my end goal. It's like the Anthony Rodia model. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Everyone fucking hates on him. You ask anybody, oh, he's a fucking joke thief, always oh, fucking not funny. It's like, all right, well, he just sold out the Wilbur Theater for like fucking I already organized times. January 6th. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> he's a murderer. Yes. He's fucking hilarious. And he did it by building his own following. He's big on Twitter and, and, and shit like that, right? He, on just like all social yeah. media, like yeah. doing like his sketches and shit. So yeah, he just, he put out videos, built his own following, yeah. produced his own shows, I think to my knowledge, to like get started. And then from there, just like went on tour and and built his hour just like on the road. And yeah. it's like, how are you going to dislike that, man? That's like from the fucking ground up. Man knows how to make money, too. Yeah. And, and, and be in the business and everything Dude's like that. Dude's fucking killing it, man. Um, so is that sort of like your mode? Do you want to be like ascend to like that level? You want to be able to do your own tour? You want the Tom McGuire yeah, yeah. Tour. Sure. I mean, the, the big rumor when you won the contest actually was that like he's related to the Maguires. Like, <laughs> like well, that's like I, I wrote on in the green room. Yeah, no, I don't own yeah, the club because yeah. everyone's always like, oh, and you're related. Yeah, that's what I heard. Here, that, right? Somebody said that to me. I think I was hanging out at fucking the brokerage or some shit like that, and they were like, oh yeah. I'm like, I'm positive that's not true. Yeah. Like, that's there's just no one stupid to believe that. Like, yeah, it's a dumbass statement. No, I, I was like, I saw. I remember. I think I remember saying that to somebody. I'm like, I saw the kid set. I don't think he's related to anybody in that building. Yeah. Like, <laughs> no, dude. Like, what was bizarre is when I took the class. It was at McGuire's. And yeah. Like, I, I was like, oh, that's weird. Like, it's fucking my last name. I was like, that's kind of funky. Yeah. And then I walk in, and they have the sticker. Yeah. In there that says Thomas McGuire's. Yeah. And I was like, wow, you take the class, they put your name up. That's yeah. awesome. <laughs> and then I realized I was the only one. I was like, am I the only one taking the class? And then I was like, uh, and then I just asked Trues and I was like, what's the deal with the fucking, the sticker? He's like, oh, it was just like, the, it used to be yeah. the name of the bar that, that was yep. like the old owner. I was like, oh. that was the, yeah, the old owner was Thomas. Yeah. But, uh, so, and that, so that's, that's really cool that you have goals like that and what you want to accomplish from this. And did you know that right away or was that something that you like, like 
later on when you were like when you because some people fall in love with it and all of a sudden you don't you don't have any goals so you got to figure out what your goals are within it if you want that if you want this dream of yourself to come true because there has mm-hmm. to be some you can't just be like i want to be an actor okay well what do you want to achieve through acting you know do you want to do regional theater for the rest of your life do you want to be in movies there's so many different levels and even with comedy there's like like i want to you know my whole my whole thing is to build this thing into hopefully something i can put on sirius xm and get paid for mm-hmm. you know what i mean um because i love radio i grew up opie and anthony howard stern uh uh, uh ron and fez and shit I, I, those guys are fucking so hilarious to me and i'm like that's so awesome to be able to have a two-hour show bring whoever the fuck you want on to to joke about whatever the hell you want and it, everybody gets to listen to it you know they have that great mm-hmm. following that's what i want to achieve and everything so i can admire that and i can appreciate um somebody that's so kind of because so many people do this they don't know what the fuck they're doing it for yeah you know mm-hmm. which which hinders them because it's like that makes you better because you have a goal to achieve which pr- makes you go to the sign up for the comedy festival or, or 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 sign up for the comedy contest or go and get guest spots or write five more new jokes today or whatever the hell or yell at yourself in the mirror tell you you're worthless the way you do <laughs> no you know? I, don't, I don't do that <laughs> it's like you suck you but, no, I, I, but I keep myself in check yeah like if no, shit don't is going, get arrogant if I agree shit is that. going too well I'll be like no good material tonight. Yeah. I'm like, you are required to open on something new and yeah. close on something new. I can understand that. Yeah. Well, that's good because you're keeping yourself in check because you want to be better and you don't want to get comfortable. So, yeah. I appreciate that. You said you had something you wanted to wrap up with. Oh, yeah. So, you asked about like stage fright. So, yeah, stage fright is a big thing for a lot of You'd be surprised how many people still are afraid of, of fucking crowds. It's crazy. Yeah. So, but what's your story? At, so I graduated from Sacred Heart in Connecticut. Okay. And that's, my uh, from heights, that's where you went to school? College. Oh, college, okay. Yeah, yeah. So and then my commencement speaker was Kevin Nealon. That's awesome. Yeah, he graduated from there. So he gave our commencement speech. It's a very Connecticut like feeling to him. Okay. Yeah. He's from Bridgeport, which oh, is where shit. like the, the school's in Fairfield. I lived in Bridgeport when I went to school there. It's literally like one town over. Oh shit. That's awesome. Okay, go ahead. So then I graduated on a Saturday and then he had a show at Sacred Heart University Theater on a Tuesday. So I DM him on Instagram. I'm like, hey man, like I just graduated like three hours ago. You were there. I was like, you were speaking there. I was like, I'm a stand-up comedian. Like, can I open for you at your show? No Dude, answer. bold statement. Bold ass statement. So now he doesn't answer his DM. I'm like, fuck, of course he's not going to. Like this guy's rich and famous or whatever. So then me and all my friends like we go out that night we get drunk i'm like dude fuck it i'm like i'm fucking going on his website and i'm reaching out to his people so i go on like his his website and i find like his pr guy and like his tour manager or whatever and i email them mm-hmm. the dm that i sent kevin okay a guy gets back to me he goes uh yeah kevin said come down and do five minutes and that was at S- sacred heart university theater which was like, I, th- I don't know how much it holds. But See, this is why people, they hear stories like this where you're like, all I did was DM him and I got to do five minutes in f- before yeah. Kevin Nealon. That's why people think that like, oh, I'll do this. I'll just fail my way upwards. Like, mm-hmm. But you were you took the time to like, you, you, you went in there and you're like, fuck it. Yeah. The mentality was like, fuck it, what do I got to lose? Yeah, there was no stage fright either. It was like at a theater. So did you do time. the time? What did you do? Oh, dude, yeah, I fucking murdered too. You did? Yeah, I did. Oh, man. <laughs> it was a How many people? I don't know how, probably like 2,000. Wow. I thought you said the big, oh no, like Dude, this was the, after the, you won the contest, the, right? The, yeah, yeah. The laughs were like polarizing. Dude. That was awesome, man. Because it's just like, it's multiplied by what you're compared to feeling. Yeah. Like the most laughs I'd ever felt was 275. Yeah, times well that, that's, that's comedy club crowds, yeah. Times that by like 10, it's like, you fucking, it felt like a tsunami of laughs. The only way I can compare it. To- I, I gotta say this. No, go, go ahead, I'm sorry. Disclaimer. Any comedian would have killed because the way they brought they me were... on stage, they go, you know, this kid just graduated two days ago oh, and he asked there, yeah. Kevin if he could open for him. They were like, so please give a round of applause for your 2022 you Sacred Heart University graduate. So already they're like, yeah. So I was going to murder like regardless, even if it was shitty Because they were like, don't boo the hometown boy. Exactly. But you know, that didn't make you try any less hard. You know, that didn't make you. Did you just go out there and softball it? Oh no! I went out there and did the the doctor joke. Yeah, okay. Just so, like my, which is my. I you consider, still brought it. Oh yeah, I fucking brought it. Yeah, it's that's the whole thing. Even if the crowd's ready to laugh, the you, get to, you act, have to make them really laugh. Dude, the feature act that night was horrible. Like everybody always says stories like, "Who's? Do you know what the name hard. was?" No, 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 I don't. I've never seen him again either. He <laughs> bombed. He bombed so hard. That's fucking nuts. Like one of the toughest bombs I've ever seen. 
Like just crickets, like or it was you... also tough to follow the the kid that just graduated from the university. Like that's fucking hard. I'm gonna check you right now. You need to calm. <laughs> no, no, I'm saying it, it, no, it no. Would... But you just it's like let's give it up for the hometown hero, yay! And some guy exactly. Like, <laughs> like I honestly like felt bad. It, it would be like if you that's your moment though. You took it. Yeah. No, but it would be He'd like been doing comedy. Or I guess he was until that moment where he <laughs> yeah. got buried by Tom McGuire. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, but I'm trying to think. It would be like if fucking you were doing comedy in like Louisiana and yeah. Theo Vaughn showed up. Oh fuck yeah! It's just like he's from there. Yeah, like I Theo was Vaughn's from that gonna university. Because, like it wasn't yeah. fair. That's a, that's true. It's still it's awesome that you got to do they that. They should have brought him up as a fucking graduate. If you were a graduate, he would have killed. If if you were just in that audience, you're like, hey, I saw the graduation. I didn't go to that school. Can I have five minutes? I would have been like, absolutely not. Yeah, like, 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 fuck like, yourself. Who the fuck like, are you? Yeah. Go get better at this. Like, yeah, but he was really cool too. He was cool. You got to meet him. Yeah, he was a cool dude. Dude, that's an awesome fucking story. It's a great way to end. Oh wait, before we go, I gotta ask this. I asked this to everybody. We can make this quick. Who are your influences? My influence. Like who's your your the like whoever like comedians you look up to or whatever like that your top five or three or whatever. Um. Hmm. Probably Bill Burr. Great one. Um. From like a I'm I'm like a big like faith oriented person. Okay, so like cool. Steve Harvey. Okay. In a way, he's just like I used to watch Kings of Comedy all the time when I was yeah. A kid. Just him, like his like YouTube videos were like very like inspiring for me. Okay. Um, so I would say Steve Harvey, Bill Burr, Sebastian, Chappelle. Um, I, I love see the Sebastian in you a little bit. You think so? That's just a little. I don't think you do it on purpose. I think it's. I think he's just. I think he's just that influential. Yeah. I think he's just. I think he's got. I think his his mannerisms are are really funny too. I, I love Louis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, Chris actually just saw Louis' new hour uh, at the Garden. I was oh, supposed to go with them, but I had to do a show oh, instead. Really? Actually, one of Louis's jokes like inspired a joke. Which one? I, the deer one. <laughs> the deer one which one is that the one where he yells at the deer oh I don't know that one. Oh my god I haven't it, seen all of his stuff go watch Hilarious I think that's on Hilarious okay yeah I, I can't I, repeat it I on just, here it's got okay, a lot okay. of shit it's got some shitty words in it but dude like the his special live at the comedy store when he does the joke about like fingering the rat yeah it's like I just found it fucking awesome that like he could take something like that and kill with it even so we, my favorite one of my favorite things he does is when he talks about it's like bag of dicks is a really funny insult you yeah, know yeah, it almost yeah. sounds proper like suck a bag of dicks suck a bag of dicks to you too sir like yeah. I love shit like that too it's yeah. silly you I know? saw like in a in one of his promos for a special, he had a joke where it was like, you know, like if I could go back in time, like I wouldn't have killed baby Hitler. He's like, I would have raped him. Yeah, would've... <laughs> I would have raped him. And it's just like stupid shit. He's like, like I that. would have picked white every time. Yeah. In the future, no, no, in the future we're fucked. But like in the past, oh yes, there's a table waiting for me. It's oh, thank you very much. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, I just I love his material. So no, like, no, I agree. Yeah, I, uh, he's... I'm honestly, dude, I'm in, I'm influenced by everybody. You just I, you're I a fan love... of comedy. I I'm am. a fan of comedy too. I mean, no, dude, there's some comics that I fucking hate. I'm sure. I don't love everybody. Yeah, there's comics where I'm like, I can't believe people. Think this, this schmuck is funny. Every you once, know? yeah, every once in a while, you're fi- like, there's some. T- I remember, like, there's just some people that you watch and you're like, I don't get it. Yeah, you know, like I just don't. Because even like, even like, you were mentioned like Kevin Hart and everything like that, but. Kevin Hart, even even the Kevin Hart stuff, like, always made me laugh. But every once in a while, there'll be somebody that rolls around and they're like, check this person out, and I'm like. I, I'll just say this, of like, because I don't like, because like sometimes I I realize around my friends if I just act the way I do around regular comedians they get upset, so I'm just mm-hmm. like it's not for me. I yeah, just say yeah. it's not for me, like because mm-hmm. clearly they did something to be successful to get to a level, but it's not for me. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot, but like I'll I'll contemplate. I'm like, you think that's fucking funny? Like Jesus mm-hmm. Christ! Thank God you said like Steve Harvey and people who are good. Yeah, and Je- I love Anthony Jeselnik. Jeselnik's funny. I think he's great. Jeselnik's just harsh. Mm. He's just fucking harsh. I just love like the efficiency in his jokes. Well, it's really a well crafted act. Yeah, it's not even that like it's dark for me. That's not what I like. No, about no, but it's it's it's, it's perfect. Like perfect. If you take out one word, it won't work. It's got straight lines and angles. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. It's beautiful. Like, it's a very well crafted act, and I think that's what's happening a lot of times, though. So, yeah. all right, we are. All right, that's perfect timing right there. We're gonna end on that note. Hey, Tom. Um, I kind of got to know you a little bit, a little more over this hour. Uh. I stand by the fact I think you're a cool guy, and um, I think you're a funny guy, and I appreciate you taking time and your very busy being handsome schedule to come down here and uh, <laughs> and uh, uh, bullshit with me for a little bit, dude. No, likewise, man. I, live, I wish appreciate you a lot of success it. in your future and everything like that, okay? Man. Yeah, man. No problem, dude. Uh, everybody, do me a favor. Uh, you have anything you want to plug? This is going to come out in a week. 
follow me on social media at Tom yeah, McGuire Comedy. Please just repost. We'll my put a link sketches. under his name when this so comes out. I can go on to He's doing that sketches. <laughs> we'll have to have him on again. We can talk about that stuff when I do like round table, get like you and LaRocky on or some shit. Mm-hmm. Do like a little governor's panel. But man, um, you're the best. Thanks for coming on. Follow follow uh, Tom on Instagram. Follow this podcast. Like this podcast. Share this podcast. My name is Joe Winchell. Good night. All right. Thank you. Absolutely. It's one of the best. It's a millennial stoner outro song. You pack a bowl and sing along. Blah, la, blah, la, blah, la, 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 la. Ba, ba, blue sheep. Ba, 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 ba. This is the favorite podcast of the Dalai Lama.